Yoda's <laughs> feisty one you are. <laughs> <laughs> I said that when I was watching the fights. I, I just <laughs> said it. And I was just like, can't really say that out loud without just thinking of like a I'll little <laughs> a towel, <laughs> toweling robed little Jedi. <laughs> That's all I can think of. <laughs> After last week's UFC 259, we were in no shortage whatsoever of drama once again. So before we get into everything, get into the meat and potatoes of the main card and a couple of the prelims as well, because it got exciting at points. I'm going to hit you with some stats. And this is for the entirety some stats. of Saturday. Are you ready? So six out of 13 fights were finished. Five KOs, three first round KOs, one submission, five decisions, and two, no contests. And just like the age old saying, you're waiting for one and then that two come at once. It's very much the case with no contests because we've had two no contests on one card and we've had two knee to the head no contests in two weeks. It's a very, very weird, weird sport at the moment. What are the Take odds? us through your thoughts and feelings of this card. Can you can bet on that. I don't think so. I don't think you can bet against disqualification. Bet on multiple so. defense. Yeah, I don't think you yeah. can. I don't think you can do that. But who knows? And if you could, I'm sure who there's knows? someone out there with making some sort of bet for that. Absolutely raking it in. But let's get into the meat and potatoes, like you said. So, of course, unless you've been living under a rock, you would know that the main event finished in eye poke, which is just unfortunate, really. Like you've got a feel for Leon. You really do. This is what he saw. What, what were your thoughts on the... What I, don't know what, I don't know what I found. It was so funny. I was just saying, this is what he saw. Oh, right. Sorry. I thought you were readjusting your lens. <laughs> no. Bro, have you seen the picture of the of, of the slow-mo? Not the slow-mo, like the still shot of the finger in the eye. I'm going to be perfectly honest. After the first time I saw it happen, I didn't watch any replays again. It was it was so nasty, it's, and the reaction was horrible. Slow mo makes everything worse. Exactly, yeah. I was yeah. Like, yeah, even I messaged you right, and I was like, he's definitely not acting, and I was like, yeah, of course he's not acting. People shouldn't even have to say that. No. And you're right, to be fair, because of what we had go on last week, everyone called him Aljo an actor and stuff, which is just a bit poor taste, I think. But like, you could see he was crying in the octagon. Like he he knew the fight was over. I knew it was over, you know. He was like, my moment's gone through this. I think he'd rather get knocked out than that happen. Mate, I was... You know what I mean? I was genuinely very, very worried. I don't know about you, but when I was watching it, you instantly, if you were watching his face, you could instantly see not the annoyance that the fight had stopped, not the fact that the competition was over, like any of this. I honestly, when I was watching him, I didn't think he was factoring any of that in whatsoever. I think he was just genuinely bloody scared he couldn't ever see again. Because when he got the doctor, the doctor came over and he was opening his eye and his eye was in a bad way anyway. And the doctor came over and he was yeah. shining the uh, flashlight in there. And he, and he said to Bilal Mohabid, he was, can you see anything? What can you see? And he was like, I can't see anything whatsoever. He was like, I, I can see nothing. nothing. And he was like really like, panicked. You know, that sort of frenzy you panicked. work yourself he was into. so yeah. panicked, yeah. Because he's, he's just started sort of almost like glitching, like scatting out. Like you could tell he had no concern over what was happening in terms of the fight like he had no interest in what was, was happening bad. whatsoever he was only interested in the fact that he I genuinely thought he may lose his eyesight and yeah. there was all this stuff sort of going on at the time oh was it intentional when's his next title shot what's going to happen to Leon and I was like hold up a second here yeah this can can even, his eyes. yeah can he even see like why are we having this conversation it's a bit That's... irrelevant like what did you think when you was watching it because I was worried I knew straight away that it was over, even when Herb was... Herb was literally saying to him, like, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. He was, like, beside himself. He was frantic, like you said. But, you know, it's one of them things. It's, it's pretty unfortunate. It definitely wasn't intentional from Leon. Like, you have to be pretty accurate to actually do that and land that, you know, to get the timing on that. Up until then, Leon looked good. He looked sharp. He, looked, he didn't look like he'd been out of the cage for long. Like, his reactions, his counters were sharp. But... It's just one of them things, you know. It's... Is there an argument to put on Leon Edwards for the fact that I think there were two, maybe even three, 
warnings about fingers before that, can you then turn around and say, well, yes, he obviously didn't intend to, but it's not accidental because yeah, he had to manage or... your weapons. Is exactly. What you he had two or three warnings there, which is a fair point, which is a fair point to make because mm. although it is easy to do and we do see it fairly often, do you know what it is? It's um. So do you know what it is? Yeah, John Jones. It happens to a lot, and Leon Edwards. They're both in this case the longer sort of range of fighter. Right? So when they're trying to post, I think it is a flaw in the glove designs. There are other MMA gloves that That's can prevent that. That can prevent that. But even um, Stipe and DC in that situation, Stipe is the longer fighter. Right? He's trying to post and get out of there, and fingers just do go in eyes. It's one of those unfortunate things, but. Yeah, he probably could have changed the way he was posting, maybe closed fist. But when you're in there, you know, it's he won't do it again, touch wood. But um, I, I feel sorry for both of them. I really do. I will, I'm sure we'll have a video on it in the future. It was going to bring me around to the question mm. of having a look at the gloves and should they be designed differently so that the fingers are a little bit curved. But we'll come on to that at a different time. My next sort of question to you or thing that I observed after the fire was I wasn't wholly convinced on even though I'm a supporter of Leon Edwards I wanted him to win I wanted him to go through what I didn't really like at the end of the fight is he was quite dismissive of Bilal Muhammad he was sort of came out and said the only reason that he fought him is because he was the only one that wanted to take the fight no one yeah. else was which I didn't really like the style of and then he sort of just dismissed him entirely and spoke about nothing but the title shot next and sort of acted as though just because we saw him start well and we sort of saw him not off the pace of what we thought he may, that we should have just sort of taken yeah. it for granted that he should take that win. But saying that, and I want to know your thoughts on it, Bilal Mohammed is not necessarily a type of fighter to get in there, start dictating the pace, reading it. Very... It's not really his style. It's not how we sort of see him fight. So I don't think that anyone was surprised how the fight was going. But it's not to say that Bilal Mohammed's style, mm. that's, it starts it starts creeping You're up on you. You've four more rounds in there exactly. with him. Exactly, it starts creeping up on you. That, he don't not get necessary. tired. Exactly that. And that's his whole that's his whole thing, right? That's his yeah. USP, is his, is his gas tank and his yeah. relentless pressure. And he was just sort of starting to, to come into the fight a little bit. Even though he weathered a little bit of a storm, like I this, said, that's that's yeah. his style. This is the thing, right? You never know how those four rounds are going to play out. Yeah, you never know how those four rounds are going to play out. And yeah, he could he could have gone and got finished. He could have gone and finished Leon. You know, we just don't know. We're not going to find out. And so there's question marks there. I think for Leon, it's a bit naive to think that we're all just going to move past this and for him to move forward. I think you need to rematch it realistically there's a lot of question marks it's not definitive at all so back to be honest with you and what are your thoughts i think the fight really showed us that yeah leon looked good looked like didn't really have any ring rust and he was yeah. back to where he was but it's exactly what you just said and what i alluded to as well you never know how it's going to play out and we're not talking about oh there was 40 seconds left potentially could have got finished there was four rounds left, which is an incredible amount of time, especially when you're talking about a fighter like Bilal Mohammed. So the same way that anything can happen and an eye poke, no contest can happen, the same way that potentially Leon Edwards slips a little on his front foot and walks onto a, a big right hand and knocks him yeah. out. So It's a game it, of inches. Exactly. So I don't... I didn't really like the way he came out and was very dismissive of Bilal Edwards. I think they have to, uh, Bilal Mohammed, sorry, a hybrid of the two. I think they have to run that back. I don't think there's any any two ways about that. I don't think it's definitive enough. Yeah, and I, and I, I do get where Leon's coming from because he's had this whole two years off. He's fought a guy that he d doesn't necessarily want to fight. Like if he goes and finishes Bilal, it will be sort of one of those things, oh, well done, you finished 13. Or even if he has a close decision, oh, you didn't dominate 13. So... It's not necessarily a lose-lose, but there's definitely, definitely more in it for Bilal Mohamed. So I get where he's coming from, but they do need to rematch. You can't, you, you can't not really. I don't see a situation where they wouldn't fight each other again. I like the, I like Leon Edwards, and I want yeah. to see him do well in that division, right? 
But I think with Leon Edwards, you have to have your cake and eat it. If you're going to be that guy, which he's come out and said he is a couple of times, I'll, I'm happy to fight anyone. I know I can beat anyone. I'm going to be the... I'm, going to be holding that belt eventually so I know I can beat anyone I'm happy to fight Hamza Chamaev I'm happy to fight Bilal Edwards good we love in the UFC like as neutrals as fans we love that that's all we ever Bilal Edwards. but honestly I just hybrid why is, that's why his name is is that just he's so easy to forget and I was watching don't remember the name I was watching something earlier and someone messed up his name but I was like yeah, so, I'll that. yeah I was I'm so glad that's not just me yeah but as I was saying, I think you have to have your cake and eat it. I don't think you can then come out and then have a a non-decisive event like that and be like, well, you know I'm better than him, so I'll fight for the title now. No, 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 that's not how we it works. We need closure. We need closure. So if you're this guy to say, I'll take any fight, and, and so far, thus far has proved that, you yeah. can't then be like, right, you know I'm better than him, so we'll call it. No, 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 you have to step in there and you have to beat him for... For my liking, because I'm yeah. I'm not being funny as well. If you're not showing definitive dominance against a Bilal Muhammad, Usman's not going to be an easier night out. He is a very very dominant at the top of that weight class at the moment. So yeah, I think we're going to have to run that yeah. one back. Yeah, I think that one for sure needs to be run back. But in terms of the rest of the card, shall we? Shall we? So, co-main, we had Misha Serkinov versus Ryan Spann. Nice pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, so I feel, glad you done that. I sound now that one. I think <laughs> um, for the duration that this fight lasted, it was a fun one. Um, Spann looked pretty dominant, pretty powerful, just too athletic, too explosive. So, he's a nice, he's a nice mix at um, 205. He dropped him like twice, three times, if I'm not mistaken. And then he called out the winner of Jimmy Crute versus Anthony Smith, if I'm not mistaken. It's an interesting one. I quite uh, liked the decision making of Brian Spann. I think a lot of the times in UFC where you hear commentators presenting on someone that maybe is making their debut or is making their first sort of couple of fights and they're finding their feet in the UFC. I think a lot of what they speak about sometimes is decision-making. It's when to have that sort of killer voice inside your head to go for it or maybe to ease off or maybe to, mm. <clears throat> maybe to go into mount or maybe to let it stand up to the thing. I think that's what I was quite impressed with, uh, with Ryan Swann. He had good decision-making. He dropped him, like you said, a couple of times, but he even then let him get back up, let it come back to the feet, heard his corner shouting at him, let him got back up to the feet and then ultimately done the damage again, dropped him again, didn't let him get back up again and then just started raining hammer fist down on him. So it's a good finish. And yeah, strong, it was a, it was strong. Dominant, it was, yeah, it was a very dominant performance where there's going to be a lot of eye, eyeballs as well on that card now, there will be because there was a lot of exciting things that happened. I think that were, that will give him a nice little bit of airtime as well. Listen, the, the main card delivered, the main card, bar one, the main card absolutely delivered. Dan I getting it done in... 22 seconds that's crazy i've seen this gavin tucker as well he's a hot prospect from canada he's very very good but he just got caught flush on the chin there was a i won't go down to it yet but we'll touch on it quickly there was a very similar knockout first fight of the night if anyone caught it matthew semmelsberger versus jason witt so they were both good knockouts dan Eig and matthew semmelsberger but We'd like to pull them up on here, but we get copyrighted. But we have done a side-by-side -side on our Instagram, so go check that and let us know which one you preferred. Both very similar. What one would you say was a better knockout while we're on the topic? I've literally just come off the back of watching that last one yeah. again. First they fight are... of the night, set the tone, why don't you? <laughs> they are like identical as well. They're like yeah. carbon copies of... Flush. When you asked me, I was like, I don't even know if I can decide. They were both as quick as each other. They were both as flush as each other. The reactions were pretty much the same. Sometimes you get a, sometimes you get a more impressive knocked out opponent, as horrible as that sounds. Sometimes you yeah. just get the straight arms and stiff arm. Yeah, it's quite uh, it's quite engaging. Let's let's put yeah. it like that. Not nice to see, but they were just very very identical. I think the only reason I'm gonna favour Dan in this situation is just because you come into the fight, you have your name as basically 50k. Your yeah. name is 50k. You have to go in there and make bonuses. They were saying it in the 
on the card on Saturday, it's funny enough, actually, it was with that um, Air Jordan. Yes, great they, nickname. Yeah, one of the best nicknames, actually, in the UFC, yeah. I'd say. But they were saying it about him, is once you have that fighter name, if you like, you almost have to somehow play into it. Yeah. You, you have to. If, if, you're, if you have a, a nickname that's known for heavy hitting and knockouts... The chances yeah, are like, he's probably not going to try and out wrestle the blood. Yeah, like damage Darren the damage Elkins is not <laughs> trying to outpoint you. He's no, not, he's got the damage towed <laughs> on his chest. Like he's coming for one thing and one thing only. But that's what's funny, right? So I think you do have somewhat of an expectation to live up to it, but also you want to live up to it as well. And also you start yeah. believing it. If your nickname That's your identity. That's your identity. You, you are the damage. That's it. So he's known for 50 gays and done it again he's Delirious. done it again and it's one of those knockouts that's so satisfying to watch because yeah it's the counter balance of forces so you have someone stepping in as you have someone stepping into the shot and they just meet and sometimes they don't look the most powerful because they're so just perfectly yeah. in tune but it it's was the off, yeah it flush. was the off switch and and that was a good night 22 seconds i think they had on on the clock but it felt yeah like, it's 22 it felt like four seconds on it. Yeah. <laughs> like the first punch. Be- like. Beautifully timed. Speaking of flash knockouts, I feel like we're seeing a somewhat of a new star emerge from the UK. Davy Grant getting it done again. Getting it done. This guy's got power and I like him. Like his post fight interviews are exciting. He's a funny guy. He's very humble in victory, even when he gets the knockout. And he comes to fight, you know. What were your thoughts on his knockout? Huge fan. Huge Big. fan of 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 Davy, massive. First of all, is the homegrown talent you sort of have to respect it. Second of all, a very, very experienced fighter for over over like twenty years of experience of fighting experience. That's huge. Mm. Really liked him. I really liked him. It wasn't a perfect performance as such, but it was an exciting performance. I think he nullified Martinez quite well at times because let's be honest, he's a very, very good striker and it was a very difficult night out potentially for... Oh, so, uh, yeah, for it's a David hard matchup. 100%. And he got caught once or twice. I think he even... Yeah. yeah, he got dropped even. But in the second round especially, he dictated the pace so well, didn't really allow Martinez to sort of get into his stride. And he started just nullifying his uh, his attack and he started looking impressive. He had he switched stance quite often, which was nice. He got yeah. caught out a couple of times with those leg kicks. But he had a, the thing yeah, his was, leg was bashed. His, his leg was mashed off. Yeah, he, he, I think he went to his corner as well, and he was like, "Yeah, there, I can, I can sort of feel them." Then they're, they're not. That was a funny me. moment in the corner. Yeah, his corner moment was like, "You've been dropped worse than that before," and he just started <laughs> laughing. It's like, "Yeah, you're not wrong." <laughs> but that's the funny thing with him. He's very, he's a very brutally honest fighter. Like you said, yeah. he's very respectful, but he's very honest as well. And I think the thing that also I was impressed with him as well is. He, he kept it moving. He kept it interesting. He had a couple yeah. of good level changes. He used, even chucked in a couple of spinning attacks. And I mean, they weren't all successful, but he kept it very, very fresh. Just trying, you know. Exactly. Trying. And to not forget the knockout, which was, oh, yeah, money. That yeah, was that, was, that, that was clean. That was clean. That was good. Good performance. We had then one flyweight bout. So this guy coming in, Cap or Cape, he was the. M1 champion, so he was pretty... It's always interesting, right, to see how other promotions champions do in the UFC, but he uh, he lost the decision to Mateus Nicolau. It was a good fight, it was a close fight, but I feel like the right guy won. And then we had... Oh, God. We had Darren Stewart versus Eric Anders, which was a great fight while it lasted, but for anyone that doesn't know, let us know what happened. Oh, I don't know. Man. It yeah. was one of them. It was just one of them. Like, I was confused. I thought it was weird. Should it have been a no contest even? I'm not so sure. I think it probably yeah. should have been a disqualification, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. I think if we look at the fight, and I'm sure you'll tell me what you thought about it in a second. When I was watching it, I was even watching it before it happened, thinking he's in a very prime position here to knee him in the head illegally do not knee him in the head illegally yeah and the weird thing was it was so i understand there's so much emotions going on there's so much going through your head there's so much to consider and think about but it was a very slow unraveling of events he had his knee on the canvas yeah. he was against the side it was 
he had stopped. There was a there was a good few seconds before his last. I can't remember what he threw before yeah. it, but it was a good few seconds. And then he sort of landed it, but didn't even land it with conviction. And then he, as soon as it happened, he was like, oh. oh yeah, and it, it's not even like knees to a grounded opponent and not a hot topic right now, <laughs> you know? Like, you just wouldn't. And I thought when I watched it, right, I thought, I don't know how flush the knee landed, if I'm being honest, but Stuart was hurt. So I was thinking, obviously, I'm back in the break. I was thinking, yeah, fucking take those five minutes and come back strong. Because he hurt Anders and Anders hurt him. So it was a back and forth fight for all four minutes and 37 seconds of it. I've got that in front of me. I didn't know that off the top of my head. I don't ever and, admit to it. <laughs> yeah, admit. yeah. But um, yeah, it was a good fight up until then. I thought he was going to take the five and come back strong, but the doctors waved it off. So I, I was disappointed in that one because I would have liked to have seen that one go a little bit longer. Well, it was, like you said, it was, good, it was a good fight up until that point. Obviously, we were supporting the local boy. He fights out of Romford, I think, doesn't he? Uh, he's from London. He moves around a lot. He trains yeah. out of shoot sometimes. But you naturally, you naturally back the uh, back the homegrown talent. So I was excited for the fire. It started off yeah. nicely. It started off well as well. I was getting into it. I was getting proper into it, and then that happened. I was so gutted as well because I really wanted to see how it played out. Because like you said, it was going back and forth. He was on the ropes when it happened, though. He was on the ropes. He was taking some damage close to getting it stopped. He fought back well, but then yeah, it was exactly like I said. It was just. As you said as well, it's not as if this isn't a hot topic at the moment. Honestly, the yeah. first thing I thought, whilst his knee was on the floor and he was in that sort of position, I was thinking, petty Anne all over. Yeah. And you must be thinking that as a fighter. That's all that's been happening in your... In your... Bubble. In your bubble, exactly. So, yeah, it was a frustrating end and a weird end. And like I said, I potentially... You potentially could have called it a disqualification. Yeah. I don't think that... He Anders could have had too much to say about that, but I'd like to see that fight again as well. But I guess other good fights to make at 85. Who knows how it's all going to play out? We're on to the prelims now, which actually did deliver. There was on the prelims, there was three finishes, one submission, two KOs. So let's go chronological. Angela Hill getting it done, three round decision. She looked good, strong, very um. Strong is actually the word I'd use. Her output was good. She didn't look like she tired. She kept it on the feet and she was landing some good shots on Ashley Yoda. What did you make of that one? I think it's a thing we speak about all the time. It's just cage experience. And yeah. it showed because this was a rematch, right? And yeah. since her last fight, Yoda's... <laughs> <laughs> the feisty one you are. <laughs> <laughs> I said that when I was watching the fight Saturday. I just <laughs> said it and I was just like, can't really say that out loud without just thinking of like a, little, <laughs> a towel, <laughs> towel in robed little Jedi. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Yoda, can't say that seriously. You instantly have no credibility to your name if you're Angela Hill beating Yoda in a fight. Yeah. In a fight. Um, but as I was saying, sorry, the last time, since the last time they both stepped into the Octagon together, she's had <laughs> Yoda's had six fights and Angela Hill's had 11. We know how active Angela Hill is. I feel like she fights yeah. literally every single weekend and it showed. She looked good. She just pressed a nice Strong. tempo. She looked experienced. Her striking was clean. It was quick. She was sharp. And it honestly, it just, it, it felt as if, yeah, but back in the day, we were sort of on the same level. But now I've just sort of stepped up. I've been and done it. And I'm just going to take you apart. And that's what it looked like, to be honest. You've, you've got to be happy with that as well, if you're Angela Hill. Like they said on the commentary, you know, she's just um, dictating the pace, not really getting hit too much. Like when you're the fresher of two fights and you know you've got someone tired, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And to watch that play out is very fun. With Angela Hill, it almost felt like watching that fight, what we've seen from a couple of fighters in the UFC and what we see relatively quite often is that sort of late surge towards that career. Now, she's not really old. I think she's 36, I want to say, Angela Hill. Oh, Angela Hill. Yeah, maybe around that age. But she's Pull been around, off, Jamie. She's been around for a little while, right? And it almost yeah. feels like before I was watching her speak and it came out and she was sort of saying, like, this is my time now. I feel very, feel much more comfortable with where I am and I feel a lot more experienced. And we see that a lot, right? Even if you look at Jan, right? We sort of nice. saw that second surge from him towards 
his later 30s. And now he's obviously on this incredible run. And you see it often because ultimately it does come down to people identifying their weaknesses, working on that and getting the experience in the meantime. And I feel like Angela Hill's coming of a really nice age at the moment. Yeah, she's 36. 36. Yeah. Get out that so, like, so, yeah, she's got, like you said, 11 to 6 also. Me, nigh on double the experience that experience is invaluable and she beat her before so you're kind of going in there with that confidence so now we've got a few more fights but we'll fly through them quickly so this one I do want to talk about a little bit Charles Air Chardon versus Marcelo Rojo Rojo that was a good fight Rojo's UFC debut there was a lot of hype around him before didn't know too much about Charles Jordan if I'm being completely honest but I do now what are your thoughts on the fight love them Loved it. We was watching Very it just like this phenomenal. Is, this is what you want. I thought firstly it was a tough night out to have on your debut anyway against Jordan again with one of the better names in the UFC. But it's like what we said: when you have a name, you have to play into it a bit. And whether he done it to sort of build into that excitement of the of, of the name, or if that's just how he generally fights, I'm here for it. I was excited. At, at one point, did he not try like a hammer fist off the cage? Yeah. To ground and pound. That was pretty exciting. That was fun. Living up to the name. Yeah, I'll Don't watch that all day. It. And that's what you want when you're in the UFC, right? Everyone has somewhat of a USP. No matter what fighter you are, you're in there and you have some strength or you have some star power that's going to draw you towards those sort of higher viewing ships. And if you're someone like him with a name like that, I mean, look at look at Pettis. You've only got to look at Showtime Pettis sort of made his career yeah. off of that. And it's a similar thing, right? Because people want to see that unpredictability. He may not have the most lucrative looking record at the end of his UFC career, but, 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 if he carries on the way he is, he will have a lot of wealth from the UFC because he'll have a lot of eyes watching him. Star in the making, for sure. For sure. Speaking of which, we had Ronnie Yaha getting it done. He looked dominant as well. Submission round two. Believe it was an arm triangle. It's, it made me laugh. I messaged you when they were walking out because they were both black belts, right? And yeah. I think DC made that point on the commentary and <laughs> Bispin said, however, however, there are levels to that. And Yaya just showed that really didn't hit. It was just as dominant as it gets. And it's that whole thing we have with Khabib he tells you two months before you're having your fight what he's going to do to you and then he comes out and does it it's just whether you can actually do anything about it and it's yeah. a similar thing with him There's, the amount of submissions that man's got is a joke and I just love watching grappling at that level really yeah it was elite it was elite then we had another fight in the lightweight division god this is a hard one Nasrat Harris he looks exactly like Kelvin Gastelum Harris. I can't say his surname, but he looks exactly like Gastelum. Yeah. If you've seen him when he's got longer hair, he is identical to Gastelum. But he looked good. He kind of fights him as well. Very fast hands, good boxing style. And he won a three-round decision. So that was a good fight. I was impressed with Hatcrass. I was watching him and I was just very, very impressed. He does and look like good. Gastelum, firstly. Yeah. He has... It's a really nice sort of tight guard, almost like Petty Yan, almost. Very, very high. Good fundamental guard. boxing. Really nice fundamentals. That left was absolute money as well, yeah, by the way. Savage. It, he used it almost, that straight left, he used it almost as often as a jab, and it found a home every single time. He was touching him every single time with that left. Honestly, didn't it was straight down the straight down the pipe, and it was beautiful as well. He didn't necessarily look, if you were just to look at him in the octagon, didn't necessarily look the most athletic or the fastest, but he had beautiful hands, he had nice foot movement, and like you said, he had really good fundamentals. I was I really was impressed by his by his striking actually. I really enjoyed watching him fight. So I look forward to seeing fight. him again. Then we had a bout in the women's flyweight. We had a bout in the women's flyweight division. We had Courtney Casey versus JJ Aldrich. Good fight, close fight. I'd probably give it to JJ. I'd say she edged it out, but it was close. Could have gone either way. And then we had women's straw weight. We had Jean Yu Frey versus Gloria De Paula. Probably butchered that, but again, another decision. So some good fights from them too, them four even. She was pretty dominant as well, Frey, in the last couple of rounds as well. She yeah. did deserve that. 
I think the one before that that you just mentioned, so with that other fight with Courtney Casey, the one thing that I sort of noticed myself, and they mentioned it on the commentary as well, is the way that she commits to her striking when she's on the front foot. And it's very almost off balance. And all of her momentum's going forward, if that makes sense. She sort of throws that right and she's always stumbling forward. And she got caught out a couple of times with it. And I just fought against, no disrespect to JJ Ulrich, but someone that's maybe a better counter striker or someone maybe just with better striking yeah. overall, I, mean, I think she'll get found out there. Yeah, I mean, she's not, if I'm being completely honest, she's probably not the elite of the elite that the women are offering after Saturday. Got a nine and nine record, you know, so that's not the sort of top tier upper echelon of flyweight that we're probably looking at, but you never know, she could turn it around. And then we had the strawweight fight, and again, the right woman won on the night. And then to start our night, we had a great, great finish. So, 16 seconds, Matthew Semmelsberger finishing Jason the Vanilla Gorilla Wit. Great nickname, right? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Just stopped him dead. Just a clean right hand, straight on the chin. Very similar to the Ig knockout. I'd probably give the Ig knockout a little bit better, but what a, what a way to start the card. Sometimes it sets the tone, right? Honestly, I do feel like it sets the tone because not only are we watching it and it sets the tone for our night, but the other fighters are watching it backstage as well. They'll have that TV. And I'm not being funny. If you see a very brutal, exciting knockout like that, it doesn't... Although you have your game plan and you go out with obviously a set plan, you don't want to go out there and just bore an audience if you've seen that. So it can yeah. uh, it can definitely change the the makeup of of the fights that that day. I think, but yeah, it got off to a good start and it was flush. It's like what I was saying before. It's when those sort of two forces meet at the same time. It's almost like the the perfect storm. Sometimes you don't even hear contact. <laughs> they just you just they just mm. come together beautifully. They punch time. so fast. It's so yeah. quick. It's so, Sometimes they punch so fast you can't even see it. You miss it. I miss it quite often. If you see those first round yeah. six second stops, you honestly miss it. They just get, they come together and you don't mm. even realise that a straight right's been thrown and the geezer's on the floor and you're like, oh, he slipped over. Nope, he's just been knocked unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty perfect as well for uh, for Matthew Semmelsberger because that's exactly what you want to do when someone's low kicking you. It's just a perfect counter. Right hand straight down the middle, perfectly timed. They're on one leg, you know. I'll take a kick for a right hand on the chin all day. If you can get there quick enough, their kick's not even going to land. So, picture perfect performance. Couldn't literally have better to start the night off. So, all in all, very good night of fights, considering it was probably one of the more top heavy cards. But everyone on the undercard delivered, and a few rising stars have emerged from this card, I feel like. So, yeah, fair play. Definitely. I think that's the beauty of it. It's what I was saying just before we jumped on that call and then just to, just to sort of wrap this video up. I think that's the beauty of the UFC. Yeah. Not only do you have a main event that you're always going to look forward to, week on week, there's always something that you're going to look forward to. You always have the undercards and they should never be slept on because there's so never. many exciting people that sit on them. And that's what we were saying. Like We watched the first to the last and it's still just as exciting. The first fight was just as exciting as the last and that's what you want really in the in the in the sport so yeah it was a very it was a very good but weird weekend of uh of fights really and that pretty much wraps us up for today's episode of casuals corner look in at the fights from this saturday so obviously we had the no contest at the top of the heap in balao remember the name mohammed and rocky leon edwards leon rocky edwards <laughs> will they run it back there's only one thing for it we gonna find out we certainly, certainly are. As always, peace and love from Casuals Corner.